All right. And glad to have you. Let's all stand up. We're going to begin the service in prayer. And uh, after we pray, the children will be dismissed. But Brother Ryan, I think they already took off, sounds like. So <laughs> they're gone. <laughs> yeah, I, Kelly, Kelly's like, what's happening? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do rejoice in your goodness. Thank you that you love us. I pray you'd help us to get a better glimpse of that tonight and just to stand in awe of your awesomeness. And thank you for those that came out to worship you. I pray you strengthen our faith. And we do love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Children are dismissed. Brother Ryan, Lord bless you. Oh, way to make it in tonight. God bless you, brother. You pray for Brother Ryan. We appreciate his faithfulness to come be a blessing to our church as he serves the Lord. He texts me all the time. I'm running as fast as I can to get there. <laughs> and uh, praise the Lord. All right. Well, we're going to take some song requests tonight, but I'm going to start us out with Praise Him. Let's find that page number, and uh, my wife's just getting comfortable to this song, and we're going to help her by singing it out tonight. It's one of my favorite Fanny Crosby songs. You can't sing it without a smile on your face. It just makes you smile as you sing it. And so let's find that page number 305. 305. Oh, what a great song this is. And you smile with me as we sing this song. This will help our hearts as we worship the Lord. What a great intro to the service tonight. Praise Him, praise Him. Another intro key player, another intro key player. That's perfect. And here we go now, 305. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Sing, oh, earth is wonderful love proclaim. Hail Him, hail Him, I is archangels in glory. Strength and honor, give to His holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard His children. In His arms, He carries them all day long. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. On that second verse, I should have told you, we're going to sing all three verses on this one. And praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. For our sins He suffered and bled and died. We are rock, our hope of eternal salvation. Hell, 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 and Jesus are crucified. Well, His praise is Jesus who bore our sorrows. Founded, wonderful, deep and strong. Praise Him, praise Him. Tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him. Every joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him. Jesus, our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals, loud with those and His ring. Jesus, Savior, reigning forever and ever. Found Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. Good, all right. That will warm you up, amen? What a great song that is, and a great job. Excellent, excellent. Who's got another song tonight? Let's take some song requests on this Wednesday. Yes, ma'am? 341. Oh, let's see what it is. How exciting. If we need a cappella, we'll do it that way. Oh, victory in Jesus. And uh, what a great song to pick that one. 341. I heard an old, old story, a Savior that came from glory, page 341, and we'll sing that first verse, uh, Victory in Jesus. And to have a second song ready, I think Sister Ann might be the second one, I think I saw her hand, so we'll get you in a moment. Oh, okay, hey, amen, that's a blessing, how about that? Great minds think I like. 341. <laughs> I heard an old, old story, how a Savior came upon the glory, how He gave His life on Calvary to save a rich like me. I heard about His groaning, of His precious blood atoning, then I repented of my sin and won the victory. Savior forever, He sought me 
your soul with his redeeming blood. Praise God, he loved me and I knew him with all my love. is to him, he plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing blood. Amen. Sister Anne. 249, heaven came down and glory filled my soul. 249, oh man, we're picking the songs that just make me shout. 249. Here we go now and oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day. Day I will never forget, that's right. I've tried to wander in darkness away. Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the need of my heart. Shout us to spell it with joy, I am telling. Let all the darkness depart. Then we came out in glory to our soul. Sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Amen. Yes, sir. Four hundred and eleven. Four one one. And let's see. Look and live. My brother, live. Amen. Let's sing it out. Another intro key play. I like these intros tonight. Amen. Here we go. I have a message from the Lord. Hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live. Live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in His Word. Hallelujah! It is only that you look and live. Amen. That's right. Just look and live, and we place our faith in Christ, and that is all that is right there. Yes, ma'am. Three hundred and fifty-two. All right. Be thinking about a song that you can grab. We keep on doing some of this tonight. 352. Whiter than snow. Oh, what a beautiful song that is. Amen. And we'll sing this out. By faith. By faith. As we think about it a little bit. And we're praying about this thing. The acapella. Here we go. Uh, whiter than snow. Ready? Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast down every foe. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Amen. Good. That's a great song. Who's got another one tonight? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Yes, sir. 153. 153. Let's see. I surrender all. Amen. 153. All to Jesus I surrender all. To Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. In His presence daily live. Surrender all, all to Thee, 
my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Ma'am? 220. Amen. He leadeth me. 220. If all oh, words with heavenly comfort fall, whate'er I do, where'er I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, He leadeth me by His own hand. He leadeth me. His faithful. Great. And uh, Emma, page 41. Hey, man, page 41. There is a fountain. Hallelujah. Filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Great song tonight. Page 41. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sin his blood speak with a flood Let's hold their guilty stands Let's hold their guilty stands Let's hold their guilty stands And sin his blood speak with a flood Let's hold their guilty stands Amen. Take just a couple more. Uh, yes, ma'am. 167 and Sister Ann, I'll take yours next. 167. Just as I am. 167. Amen. And we'll take a time to think this through for a moment. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. And this. So what? And. You know, the, the little bit about this song, when it was written, uh, the, the person was an invalid, and they had the idea that in order for them to get saved or go to heaven, they'd had to make it to church. And then finally someone had visited this person and taught them, no, 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 the Lord Jesus loves you, and you can trust him right where you're at. And God stirred that person's heart after they placed their faith and wrote this song. Amen? Just as I am. Let's try it out. Okay, right out of the gate. Here we go. Ready? Just as I am without one plea, but that I blood was shed for me, and that the bids me come to me. Sister Ann, 207. And we'll finish one more. Sadie, you got the last one. Take time to be holy. Praise the Lord. We've done this before. I know it, right? Didn't we try this one? <laughs> I tried this one, right? <laughs> Let's try it again. I don't know it. All right, here we go. Ready? Take time to be holy. Speak off with thy word. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Good. Amen. Sadie. 219. Uh, 
All right, let's sing this one a cappella. Little as much. If you don't know, you'll like it. It's a really good song. 219. Who's never sung this before? It's a new song for you. Oh, great. You'll like this song. Here we go. In the harvest field now ripen, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling to the harvest calling you. Little as much when God is in it, labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it if you'll go in Jesus' name. Amen. Great singing. You may be seated. How wonderful tonight. How blessed we are. All right, let's take a prayer bulletin out. I think everybody might have one, but if you need one, just wave your hand up. We'll get you one. Everybody good tonight? All right. Thank you so much for taking care of that. And to look at our upcoming events, we got um, some announcements. Sunday school, we're studying our church and Baptist history. Be in prayer for that. I believe we'll be stepping into really the beginning of uh, the Roman Empire. We're going to be looking at the emperors that reigned, and so... Uh, you keep in prayer for uh, our church history and Sunday school, and uh, also be in prayer for our missionary families that are coming. We have the Bell family on the 18th of February, and the Klein family on the 25th. We support the Kleins, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing an update and see what all is happening in their life. You don't want to miss those dates. Mark that down. Also, this upcoming Sunday after the morning service, we'll be having a mission team meeting for those that are interested in participating and encouraging our missionaries. Uh, on a special side note. And then also we have um, Northern Arizona School of the Bible. It's going to be starting on the 19th of February. That's going to be to look for the go date on the Feb February the 19th. And so it's just around the corner. And that will be actually President's Day. So maybe you can think of it that way. President's Day is when we'll start back into the School of the Bible. And uh, you be in prayer. I know Brother Grammar's excited. And I'm excited. and Looking forward to a great time this upcoming year. Some uh, requests that we want to highlight. Marvin is uh, who's Mr. Tobias Hatcher's daddy. Uh, Marvin Hatcher, he's been recovering from a stroke. We just found this out. And uh, also needs some help with house renovations uh, before he comes home. So he'd be in prayer for Tobias Hatcher and his family and Marvin. And uh, I sure do appreciate uh, the Hatcher family. Every time I see Marvin, I see him about once every three to four months just out in town. And always a good time. We give each other a big hug. And he always tells me, I'm going to come visit you soon, Pastor Greg. And I sure do appreciate him, care for him. And I believe the body, the side that's been affected the most by uh, the, the stroke is the opposite side of where his amputation hand is. So he's got an amputated arm already. Uh, and now the other side of his body is what's been struggling. Uh, that got attacked through the brain stem cell. Now both sides. Okay, so both sides actually, something happened after the stroke. So, hey, I, how long has he been in recovery? Do you remember that? 16th of January. So keep that in prayer. Let's see. Keep praying for the families of the SEAL team that has been, uh, has been missing. And pray for that situation. Pray for Pastor Mark Andrews, who's got cancer, severe chest pain, upcoming doctor's appointment. That's um, Janet Grammer's sister, husband, so pray for that. Um, got a good report that the bowling family is united together. No, they made it safe and sound, no problems there. So we're rejoicing. Candace being able to get all the way up to the northeast, and uh, that's a blessing. Amen. So happy that she's with her husband and so forth. Um, I was talking to her daddy uh, on the phone just recently. Good to hear his voice, and, and he's doing well. He sure does appreciate our church, and that's a blessing. Let's see. Uh, anything that you'd like to add tonight to either side, the salvation list or the health uh, special request list? Anything to add tonight? An update, on update on Kinsley. That's great.
keep praying for that um, precious little girl Kinsley and she was able to have um, her chemo done and um, we're thankful for that and she's got a cast on that leg and just keep her in your prayers anybody else tonight like a Mennonite mission yeah. which uh, I actually got to go and see the property one time I don't know if you've ever seen it it's huge it's huge it's like tucked away uh, right at Second Mesa behind that trailer where there's a, a like a cell phone trailer you can go get your cell phone mm -hmm. on behind that is buildings like crazy and then the main it's got a whole school there's a big old school there you're like what is this so I mean uh, I remember when I first saw that with Andy maybe 12 years ago. And uh, we've always thought, what if God could somehow get you into this place? <laughs> yeah, so praise the Lord. Very excited about that. Amen. That's a blessing. Pray for him as he preaches this upcoming Sunday. And uh, pray that God gives him favor and stuff like that. They have young people that show up and serve there and teach in the school uh, that kind of go like a two-year mission that are Mennonites that grow up. And so they got this rotating door they had in the past. I don't know what's happened lately. But. He said that the pastor that was leading that mission, he left and there's nobody there as a, an overseer or a pastor. Got it. That's great. Great opportunity. Pray for that. Anybody else? Those that don't know Andy and uh, Magnarilla's been on Hopi Nation now for 15 years. He started a church out there, Bethel Baptist, and he's just been faithful, staying there. And, and uh, God sent him a wife, and they got married, as you know. And how many children they got now? Four? Four. Four, Four wonderful children. And <laughs> they're precious children, no doubt about it. And well, the oldest is how old? One? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. It feels that way, though. These children have been coming quick, man. It's been like boom, boom, you know. God's blessed this family fast. So how old is uh, AJ? Five. Okay, five. <laughs> yeah, we're very thankful for that. Very thankful. I love, I love uh, Andy, his wife, Nancy, and family. Anybody else tonight? Uh, a request you want to add? Yes, sir, Chris. Craig, I'm so sorry. Craig. Oh, good. Woohoo! That's great. Excellent. It's great. Teen Challenge, right? No? What? What? What's the rehab called? Oh, okay. Good. Amen. Amen. Just let you know, and uh, just recently I was in contact with, uh, I got a contact from a a local church that um, I know the pastor, know of him, great local church up in Michigan, and they have a men's recovery addiction place where men can go, men, not teenagers and children, but men can go, and it's a local church, and uh, get help. And they stay there like, like the guidance center, uh, but it's a fundamental work, and we thank God for that. So if you know any men, if you ever come across that, let me know. You know, We want to be a help, and they're looking for more men that they can take in and help. And Bridgeport Baptist Church, I believe is the name of it, which is uh, from uh, Pastor R.B. Olette, pastors that church up in... Uh, Michigan, and so pretty neat stuff, you know. I love those kind of ministries. Yes, sir. Um, have, you heard, have you heard back recently from the Bushy family, the Rock of Ages? I have not. Have not. So waiting to hear from them. Hopefully they're going to get to come out here soon, right? Get that work going. Anybody else? All right.
Well, we're going to go to our Lord in prayer. Spend some time with Him tonight. Pray for the lost people tonight. And uh, pray for these on the health and miscellaneous side. A lot, a lot of requests. A lot of things that we're praying for. And uh, so take time to pray. That's one way you take time to be holy and to love people. Lady Ferguson, the friends of uh, Paul and Ruth, he went home to be with the Lord. Let's pray for their funeral service. Those that do not know, Paul and Ruth both went to church by bus. They were bus kids growing up. Isn't that amazing? And uh, so the bus ministry works. Children's ministry works. Going after children works. Sometimes we think, does it? Well, Paul and Ruth is an example. And Larry Ferguson was their bus driver. How about that? He drove the bus for them and was faithful. And uh, he just went home to be with the Lord. They wish they could be there with that service, but they cannot. So pray for them. Pray for all that's uh, going to be able to go. And, uh, you know, our life is a fast life. You're young, you're old, or whatever it might be, but it's going to be gone pretty soon. And think about, what are you going to do that's going to impact somebody's life for eternity? Someone might say, Larry Ferguson, and, and say, who's that? Well, I'll tell you what, he's somebody to Paul and Ruth that made a difference. And so, um, thank God, when you give your life to the Lord, you might not feel like you're making a difference. But there's somebody's life you've touched. And it's worth it. It's worth it to serve the Lord. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. It's worth it. Let's pray tonight. I'll close this out.
Heavenly Father, we do ask that you would meet with us tonight, and I pray for these requests. Uh, please use Brother Magnarilla and his wife, and I pray this will be a great open door. We know your promise that if you open a door, no man can shut it, and so I pray for that door to be open for the glory of thee. Use him as he preaches. We are praying for great things. Uh, please be with our uh, request of that's on here. Kinsley, please keep touching her. and I pray you'd heal this little girl. I pray for Marvin and that you'd help him recover and the house renovations that need to be made. Uh, please open that door and help them in that area. I pray for the funeral service of Larry Ferguson, that you'd encourage everyone there that they can be comforted and rejoice in the goodness of thee. Thank you for his faithfulness to drive a bus to church and just to be a witness and to go the extra mile with his life. And I pray you bless him, Lord, his family, bless his memory. Um, please be with Caitlin as she's on a cruise. I pray she can be safe. And Mark Andrews with his cancer, I pray that you would help this upcoming doctor's appointment and that they can get some answers there. So sad to hear this. Please help and be with the SEAL team that's been missing and the families there. And we pray for your glory to be shown. Please protect our military and give our leaders wisdom. I pray for a revival in our country. I pray also that you be with Temple Baptist Church. Help them to know thy will. Pray for Annie Hallwood and her heart problems. And Eric, uh, who's been with RSV, I pray that you'd help this little boy. I pray for Carlinda and Creed, that you'd help them as they've settled in. And Chrissy, um, the family there, now that she's with you. And pray that you be with Owen and continue to heal that boy. We're so excited about the upcoming, or the, the news that we heard last week. And Please help Joetta Jones and give her uh, wisdom and direction. And comfort her in all the decisions she's making. Thank you for the safety that you gave the bowling family as they got reunited with Trent. I pray for Ryan and his family as they're uh, still probably no doubt thinking about grandmother going home to be with you. Or be with Mr. Doolittle as he's trying to find out how to get those medical bills. And I pray for Steve Carroll that he'll continue to recover from his heart attack. And Kristen and Brandon that you would uh, just be with this unspoken. God have thy way please and work in Crystal's life and um, I pray for Elaine Ann and that you'd help with her complications she's had. Be with this little precious child. And God help Christian Yazi. I pray that the teen challenge is going well and he's growing in his faith and getting victory. Please help Bill Webb in his serious situation. And Lord, we pray for those that are lost to be saved. We love you. We thank you for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand up. We'll take the, the word of God. Hey, Eric, could you turn me on right here? And let's take the Bible to Proverbs chapter 15. Proverbs chapter 15 tonight. The Word of God. What a blessing it is to be able to take the Bible and to read it. When you open up the Bible, you're opening up the mind of the Lord. And you're getting to hear His voice. And He speaks to you. He speaks to me. And God wants to speak to you. We believe in the infallible precious inerrancy of the Word of God. That the Word of God, there's some alls about it. As you're turning, let me tell them to you. The Bible says all Scripture is given, and there's three big alls when you think about it. Number one, all Scripture is necessary. All Scripture is necessary. You don't just need some of it, you need all of it. All Scripture is inspired. All of it inspired. Jonah, Job, Nahum, Genesis, all the way to Revelation. The all of Scripture is inspired. It's all necessary. It's all inspired. And thank the Lord, all Scripture is sufficient. Every part of the Bible is sufficient for you, for your life. And uh, we don't have to improve on the Bible. You don't have to find another book to add to the Bible. You don't have to find some hidden keys of some other kind of philosophy. The Word of God in itself if God had you on the backside of some place in the world that was missing out on a lot of technology or a lot of library, a lot of opportunity to read other materials, 
Did you know if you had the Bible, you'd have more than enough to live, succeed, and have a successful life with God? Because it's all sufficient. We do ourselves an awful disservice when we think we have to have something else to make it. No. As the songwriter said, feed me till I won't no more. We just need the Bible. Look at Psalm 15, uh, Proverbs 15. We'll read verse 1 to 3 and we'll emphasize one of these verses. The Bible says, Soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Father in heaven, we do ask now that you'd help us. I know you don't have to have me, but I've got to have thee. I pray you'd use me in this time and speak to my heart. God, speak to others. We believe that your word is powerful and that it's a living seed. And I pray that you would help us tonight. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You may be seated. Right after verse 3, you have another verse on the tongue. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. We find the first four verses of Proverbs 15. It gives some great truth about the tongue. And verse 3 just sneaks in there about something else. But it can be relayed to the tongue. Let me remind you, when you read the book of Proverbs, it's a book about wisdom. Wisdom can be easily defined like this. The ability to apply knowledge spiritually in your everyday life. The ability to apply knowledge spiritually in your everyday life. Because not everybody knows how to make wisdom or wise choices. They might have some knowledge but they don't make wise decisions. I've made some pretty dumb decisions in my life. And I think if you'd be honest, you could say, I have too. And uh, the Bible teaches that there's an earthly wisdom and a heavenly wisdom. Proverbs gives us heavenly wisdom. The human penman of Proverbs was King Solomon. King Solomon is the wisest man that has ever lived. Who knew that? Raise your hand. Of course, in Solomon's reign, God gave him an opportunity to pray and have an answer to prayer. And instead of praying for wealth and fame and stuff like that, he just prayed that God would give him wisdom so he could be a right fit king. And God poured out the blessing of all that he ever could desire. Did you know Solomon was so wise that he could quote, the Bible tells us he could quote 3,000 Proverbs. Now chew on that for a moment. How many wise sayings could you quote right now? Birds of a feather flocked together. Early to bed, early to rise, makes one wealthy, healthy, and... Oh, somebody knew it. Good, good, you know. Maybe you can do a few of them. Maybe you know a few uh, sayings. How, what if, I mean, listen, Solomon could drop 3,000 off. I bet King Solomon was that kind of guy that if you went to see him and you started talking to him, he would only reply in Proverbs. He would just be dropping off wise sayings. Which is really Proverbs, when you think about it, what it is, it's a wise way to get a truth about in a neat saying. And I bet King Solomon would just be, that would be the whole conversation. You would leave going, whoa, (laughs) I just spent time talking to a man who's got a deep well. I can hear Dr. Sexton saying, boys, to us preachers, about 15 of us one day, he was saying, boy, he'd always touch his nose when he'd talk. And uh, he'd go, boys, you need to dig a deep well. You'll be drawing from it the rest of your life. <laughs> As a proverb in a way, you know. Dig a deep well because you're drawing from it. Memorize all you can the word of God. Memorize wisdom all you can because you're going to be pulling out for the rest of your life. And Solomon was that way. So when you read Proverbs, you're reading the wisdom of God. You're reading wisdom saying, follow me, listen to me, and I'm going to help you make right decisions. It tells us, I love verse 1. I can't tell you how many times God's brought verse 1 to my mind, and it's rescued me from making a bad decision. A soft answer turneth away wrath. Who knows that's true? Say amen. Amen. I don't know if anyone said amen. They help me out. You make me feel better when I can hear you. Who knows that's true? Say amen. 
Amen. Amen. Boy, I've watched it happen. I've seen it happen in my own life. Someone that's been stirred and they have bad feelings and I've said soft answers and it just calmed them down. And uh, so, you know, there's a way that you can speak to people. One famous NBA ref who's been retired now, he was a famous guy uh, named Joey Crawford, ball-headed. If you ever watched NBA games, he'd be the guy running around just, I mean, real smooth and taking care of business. Uh, uh, known for uh, ejecting Tim Duncan from the sideline. That was Joey Crawford. But Joey Crawford uh, said uh, one time when a coach is really irate and yelling, he gets beside him and begins to talk softly. And in a, in a big auditorium like the NBA, uh, you can't hear him unless you get close. If someone's whispering, it's like, and he said, before you know it, that coach would get down and he's whispering back to me because I'm whispering to him. Well, what I saw, well, what did you see? And it just calmed things down. <laughs> and, you know, it's amazing what you can do with a soft answer. Then it goes on to tell us, The tongue of the wise you this knowledge of right. The mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. A wise tongue knows when to say the right thing. You can say something right, but do you know when to say it? The right time. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just because it's truth doesn't mean it needs to be presented in that moment. I've learned that uh, my mouth can get myself into trouble with my wife uh, because I might try to say something that can help her that I think it can help her and it was said in the wrong moment. And uh, let me use a Bible illustration so I don't get in trouble. Uh, a good person to look at is uh, Hannah's husband. Hannah was barren of children. She had an adversary and she wanted a child and uh, she was tore up about it. What did her husband do? He thought he'd be the nice man. He said, baby, but you got me. And uh, she was probably like, uh, you can leave. <laughs> you know, the right thing at the right time makes a big difference. And we ought to use our tongue with some wisdom. Know when to say things. Know how to say things. Know the tone. Know the place, the tone. Use your words. Use that in a skillful way. A lot can be done. Uh, speaking of another proverb uh, in our in our society that we use, a wise saying uh, that I like to think of, you can always get more bees with honey. <laughs> you can always get more bees with honey. And uh, use your tongue right. Verse 4, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. A firstness therein is a breach in the spirit. You'll find out that a tongue can give many byproducts. Fruit can be given from it and it brings life uh, to the situation. No doubt about it. I want you now to focus in this verse, it just sneaks right in there, verse 3. It's one of the verses that my grandmother did in calligraphy and put in a beautiful frame and had me hang it up in my bedroom. As a teenage boy, this was in my room. The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, I've read this so many times, and I think many times when I read it, especially since it was on my wall, I could quote it so easily because I've seen it so many times in my life. We miss the powerful, divine truth that's in that small verse. I can hear a preacher that I admire say, never let small verses with big messages pass you by. Well, this is one. This is a big message. I want to break it down for you and we'll be done. The all-seeing eye of our Lord. Notice what it says. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. Then it says, Beholding the evil and the good. God first wants us to see what He sees. The eyes of the Lord are in every place. If you like to mark your Bible or circle words, you could circle that word every place. And maybe somewhere, a footnote, or in a small way right, omnipresence. Did you know our God is everywhere? The great doctrine of His omnipresence, meaning everywhere at all times. The Bible tells us that the Lord sees. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. And now, Think about this. Someone has the idea that God is up far, far up in heaven, which we know His throne is there. There's a throne of heaven. And that He sits on the throne and He's looking down. But here it gets more personal. 
It gets more intimate. It's not from a big watchtower that he looks so far off. But it's everywhere he's looking. Our God is at all places at all times. It's one of the great doctrines of the Bible about his attributes that no human being can possess. Did you know there are attributes of God that you and I have, and then there are attributes of God that only he alone can have? Like, for example, he's the self-existing one. I have to have God, but God does not have to have me. That's an attribute he alone has. We all depend on him. And another one is this omnipresence. To think that God is everywhere. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Whoa! Everywhere. Everywhere. His seeing eye. And then God wants to take it in the next part of this verse and He gets it to a place of a closer determination of what He's really doing. Notice what it says. Beholding the evil and the good. If you circle again, you could circle the word beholding and beside that put omniscience. Not only is He omnipresent, He's everywhere, but now we're introduced to the great truth. He knows everything. He's beholding the evil and the good. Our God is not only in the room, but our God is observing you. Observation. Examining. He watches with a close determination. A close determination. How about that? If my God is everywhere and my God is watching in close determination, we know this, that our God knows it all. And it also shows the power of His providence. Nothing happens to you without God knowing about it. Nothing takes place without God knowing about it. Nothing passes into your life without God knowing what's happening. Because we can't see Him, our human flesh at times might even think, does God really care? Does God really know? Does God really see the situation at hand? Our God is closely examining and watching what's going on. He knows it all. He knows it all. I don't know if there's that many divine truths about God that bring such a conviction to our moral compass than that right there. <laughs> Boy, that does something to my morality. He's everywhere and He knows everything. He's watching what's taking place. We break down two things and we'll be done tonight after we've recognize the omniscience of our God and His omnipresence. Notice what He's examining closely. It says the evil and the good. The evil and the good. No doubt about it, the first of the two is a warning. Isn't that something? God wants to warn first. I, I, I would say that if you are an evil person, this could give you some terror. <laughs> God sees it all. Many times we look left and we look right, but we forget to look up. He sees it. Our God sees everything. Our God's watching the evil that takes place. There's evil men and evil doers, and the Bible says they wax worse. And Psalm 2 says, Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? Our governor right now is on a trail of some evil things as she's doing everything she can do to stop the freedom of choice in, a, in our state about parents sending their children to private schools and Christian schools. I don't know if you're aware of this, and if you're not, you need to, and I'll send you the link. You need to sign it. Our governor is trying to take uh, the what's called STOs out which is the opportunity for people to take their state taxes and give them to a Christian school instead of the public school, which helps students that don't 
maybe have the funds to go to that Christian school, but they desire a Christian education, our state allows that. It's one of the great blessings of Arizona, but she's going to try her best to take it out. And then there's the ESAs. And she's on a vindictive path. She cannot change that, but she can regulate it. And she's going to make three rules in order to have an ESA. One of the rules is you have to be in public school for 100 days, and then you can get out and get the ESA. Well, that's going to eliminate a lot of people that are already in the Christian school. And there's two other ones that almost make it impossible for anybody to get these ESAs. And homeschoolers, your ESA will have that limit. It's going to change the ESAs. She is on a path. Hey, the heathen are raging tonight. Behind closed doors, they're trying to stop the freedom of choice. By the way, guess who God gave the commission to educate your child? The parents. Not the school government. That's not the commission. God gave it to the parents. Thank God a parent can get help. Amen. But it should be the parent's choice because the command is given to the home to educate your child. And you can get help by sending your child to another school to be an extension. And we know today that the public school teaches ungodly things. And we need help, don't we? We need help. The heathen are raging. But I said that to say this. Number one, we need to know about it. But number two, guess what? God does know about it. He sees the evilness. He sees the plots. He sees the plans behind closed doors. He sees what's taking place behind closed doors. I don't know if you're aware of those things, but God is more than aware. If I was an evildoer, I think I would be a little nervous to know that my God sees it all. He sees the evil. But notice number two tonight, not only does he see the evil, but God sees the good. We see the warning that God sees, but now we see the comfort that God sees. I, listen, it comforts the heart when God says, I see good. He sees you as you serve him. He sees you as you do what's right. Uh, do you sometimes feel like, uh, you know, you're just steady Eddie, doing what's right, and oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time, and oh my goodness, why has this befallen me? I'm trying to serve God. Do you ever feel that way? Well, listen, you just need to stay at it and keep on doing what's right because our God sees the good. He's beholding you as you do good. Uh, years ago, you might have heard about this thing, it was the Civil War. Who's ever heard of the Civil War? I'm just making sure we got some people in here that's a little educated about it. Yeah, there was a civil war in our country. And uh, we had three great generals of the civil war. Of course, General Grant from the north, a great general. And then another general was General Lee of the south. Another great general was General Jackson. Uh, those that do not know, General Jackson was such a strong Christian underneath the leadership of General Lee. Such a strong Christian and so known for his leadership that when he died... Other parts of the world made recognition, stopped their trains, stopped places of business, Scotland, England, and announced the death of Stonewall Jackson. It's pretty interesting. General Lee, he was a good man. He had some things he needed to get right, and no doubt God made sure the North won, and we appreciate that. And my daughter thinks President Lincoln was the greatest president our nation ever had. I think he's second to George Washington. That's just personal preference, but she can be wrong if she wants to be. Amen. Uh, but, you know, uh, in that war, you know, I was recently studying the life of General Lee, and one thing about General Lee is his motto for life. He had a motto he lived by. His motto was this, duty first and be a gentleman. And he said, when things would come into my life, I'd ask myself, above my feelings, what is my duty for the moment? I want to remind you as a Christian, you're going to feel like there's times where you want to be lackadaisical. You're going to want to feel like times you're going to give in to temptation. Maybe there's going to be times you feel like, well, do I really need to do that? I've done it enough. I've done it for many years. May God help us to remember duty. Duty. It's our duty. Our God's watching us. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. 
and he's watching the good. And it's our duty to be good. It's our duty to live a good life. It's our duty to be good to others. It's our duty to live the Christian life and read our Bible when we don't feel like it and pray when we're tired and be kind to others when they're not to us and turn the other cheek and be faithful to the house of the living God. It's our duty. And God sees it. You might not think anybody else is seeing it. Guess who sees it? The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Beholding the evil and the good. I hope that comforts your heart. It comforts mine. I I don't have to please another man. I'm not trying to please another person. I'll tell you who we need to please. The one who's watching. And he rewards the evil. And he rewards the good. Let's pray tonight. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Beholding the evil and the good. Our God sees your life. Are you tired tonight? He's watching. Maybe you're going through some loneliness. He's watching. He knows. He knows. He knows when you feel like Elijah and you feel like you're the only one serving. He knows when you feel lonely in the house. He knows when you hit rock bottom. He knows when you go through a hard day at work. He knows when you have a bad phone call. He knows when your friends let you down. He knows when you're stressed out at home as a mother. He knows when you feel the load as a father. He knows when you feel the tight, hard moments of this life. He knows. And He's watching. He sees. Keep your duty. Keep your duty. Stand your post. Keep doing what's right. God's going to bless you. Did you know our God rewards? God's fruit's better than man's fruit. Amen. God's blessings are better than man's blessings. God's touch is better than man's touch. And our God in heaven, He's watching and He will bless. You just stay faithful. You stay faithful. Father in heaven, I pray You'd help us tonight. I pray duty will ring in our heart. And we'll be reminded of a God who's everywhere, sees it all, He knows it all. And God, I stand amazed that You'd love me. I'm, I'm just so wicked, undone. I deserve an eternity separated from Thee in a lake of fire. Oh, Lord, to think that you gave your very best in Jesus Christ to forgive us, redeem us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all this within me. Bless his holy name. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. We love you tonight. And we thank you in Jesus' precious, wonderful, beautiful name. Amen. Amen. At this time, we ask the ushers to come forward. Well, the offering. We'll sing "Great is the Lord" as the offering. That's what we'll do, and you'll play it. Oh, you got it. Well, by faith. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, and we'll give to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. What a Savior. What a God. Hallelujah. Bless the, bless the Lord. I pray you bless the offering for the furtherance of the gospel. In Jesus' precious, beautiful name. Amen. Great is the Lord. And 
greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king? Amen. Well, we're going to be dismissed tonight. Now, look, I, I think some of y'all might have got nervous. Just because I said, Journal, you thought, well, this is going to say the South will rise again. I don't know if it's going to say that. And I'm not like that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I will tell you this. See, my daughter thinks President Lincoln better than Washington. I don't want to get to the discussion. Maybe you think that. All I'm going to say is this. In the history book I was reading of the day, it said President Lincoln, growing up, had three books that were his favorite to read. The Bible, Pilgrim's Progress, you have read the Bible. The biography of George Washington. That should tell you right there who's the greatest that ever lived right there. When one's reading the other, that should speak right there as long as they go back. So we wouldn't be if it wasn't President Washington. Everybody knows that. So, you know, but, uh, you know, whatever. So, God bless you, honey. Amen. We do appreciate it. Who knows the three most famous speeches by American historians today? I'm not saying the one from yesteryear, but today the three historians that would say the three greatest American speeches given. They might know him. Gettysburg Address is one. George Washington's farewell speech is another. They might know the third that's right. It's not a president. More than the king. All of the King Jr. Those are known as the three greatest speeches. By the way, does anybody know when Gettysburg Address was given? This is a credit to President Lincoln. Before he spoke at Gettysburg, another man that was known for being an orator spoke for two hours. And then Lincoln got up and said ten direct sentences. And it went down as one of the greatest speeches ever to be given. And that man that spoke for two hours, nobody was going to know his name. <laughs> Isn't that great? It goes to show you it's not how fancy you are and all the jazz you put out. God can use you just on ten plain straight sentences to be life changing. That's good stuff, isn't it? Oh, and if anybody tells you President Lincoln, you know, he grew up in a Bible religion, but it was not Christian. Until later on in life, he grew up a work salvation man. But when his son died, after his son died, he was in a hospital himself, and a nurse, I've got the story, the biography of it, a nurse helped him place his faith in Jesus Christ and alone for salvation. And President Lincoln was known as the president that would pray overnight.